there's more than one way how to get rid of those stupid, annoying assassins. Here's the other one. Get eight units and completely surround it in a box. If the assassin is next to um, the sea or a mountain, that counts as well, so as long as they're surrounded and they can't move. Then you got to get another unit and you got to place him on top of the assassin and whack, the assassin is dead. Seven things that I wish I knew about medieval two sorts of war much, much sooner. And this is stuff that I wish I knew earlier. Okay, get right in your head. I'm in no way promising that this is uh, seven stuff you don't know. It's not a seven stuff you didn't know about medieval two video. It's not that. It's just stuff that I wish I knew earlier. It may help some of you, and that's good. If you know all this stuff or some of this stuff, then good for you. This is just stuff that I wish I knew earlier. Put into a list, seven different things. Let's see what I've got. Number one, and this took me far too many years to figure out, and thank you to Legend of Tortworth uh, for letting me know this one in one of his Let's Plays. Uh, the Settlement of Jerusalem. Um, if you hold that, you get a plus 20% morale boost. Um, it's like, uh, not morale, uh, public order boost. It's kind of like a, a wonder in a way built into it from Rome Talk to War. Uh, yeah, 20% morale, 20% public order <laughs> for holding Jerusalem. Doesn't matter what faction you are, what religion your faction is, you just get that. Or, I, I don't actually know if it works for the orthodox factions, but yeah, let's just say it well, but I don't actually know. Now number two, I've mentioned before in my Rome Talk to War one, uh, but there was one thing that I missed. Um, if you hold down ALT and then right click, you get a different type of attack. Let's say you've got archers and you want to use your archers in melee. Or you've got missile cavalry and they've still got some ammo in, but you want to use them in melee, chase the enemy down sort of thing. Uh, well, you can, and this took me years to figure out. Just hold down ALT and then hover over the enemy, right click and yeah, it gives you the op like the option to have the melee if you're holding down ALT whilst doing it. Uh, you'll see a little sword symbol. Right, that's what I talked about in Rome Talk to War, but there's something else as well. Other units have other weapons in them, and I can't remember all of them, but I think um, some Lance Cavalry units, for example, in their normal attack, they'll charge in with their lances, getting a very heavy charge in and killing a lot of enemies. I would usually recommend just use the lances, it's fine. But if you hold down ALT and attack on some units, some lance cavalry units, they'll pull out a mace or a sword instead and they'll charge with that, which will give them a boost against other cavalry units. I don't have all the details of all the different units that this works for, as to be honest, I don't really care. My, my units fight fine. Uh, they don't need this alt weapon all the time. Um, but I'm sure there'll be like some spearmen out there who, if you hold down alt, they can become swordsmen. They're not as good with their swords as they are with their spears, but sometimes it, it can help you on the battle a little bit. So there it is. That's more of a just, here's the information, mess around with it and have fun. Hold down alt, then attack, and see what happens. Sometimes for some units it will be different. Number three, this goes to a very specific spot on the map, and it's in a castle. And there's other spots you can do this as well, but this is the main one. If you get your archers up on the walls, um, in a lot of instances, you'll actually be able to uh, fire in onto the plaza from those walls. And the enemy, in a lot of cases, cannot do anything about it at all, especially if they've got a lot of cavalry in their settlement. Just a very simple way of being able to attack a settlement and I guess abuse the stupidity of the AI in a way. Well, it's their own fault they should have had troops on the walls defending them, so it's their own fault. Sieges when attacking can be really difficult, so small stuff like this to help you out. Uh, they're quite valuable information. Took me about five years to find that spot. Number four, chivalry and dread. Oh, this again. This is actually. All of these for me are embarrassing how long they took me to figure out, but I just got to keep reminding myself it's okay. Some of you have only just done to figure this out as well. Um, so, yeah, it's not too bad. Right, here's how it works if you let prisoners go, or, you know, go on crusades, occupy the settlement, then you gain chivalry. If you exterminate populations, capture prisoners, kill prisoners, uh, do all of that stuff, then you gain dread. 
First of all, it's good to fortress your generals as, let's say you've got a general with uh, six uh, chivalry and you decide to execute prisoners, um, it won't start gaining dread, he'll actually go down in chivalry. Like, chivalry is plus one, plus two, plus three, dread is minus one, minus two, minus three, so it's, it's on one of those scales. So just, once you get your character, decide what direction you're going to send him in. Like, is it going to be chivalrous or dreadful? Not, not dreadful in that way. Okay, so that's a, a basic explanation of what they both are, but what do they do? Well, for every one dread that your general has, the enemy loses morale. So, if you're the type of person who likes to ha uh, throw all your troops in and try and get a mass route on the enemy, then dread will be best for you. And most people do actually go dread. Legend of Total War always goes dread. It also allows you to exterminate settlements without worrying about losing points and uh, capturing enemies as well, executing them. Dread is, in most cases, the best way to go. For every chivalry point you have, you gain morale. So if you're the type of person who likes it very long battles, you don't focus on morale that much. It's more about just winning the battle with strength and not with flanking and morale. Uh, mass routes, if you, if you don't do the mass route stuff, then chivalry is best for you. But there's another advantage of chivalry, which is why it's always good to have one or two generals in your faction with high chivalry. And that's that every single chivalry icon that your general has, in the settlement that he's in, he provides plus 0.5 population growth. So let's say you're in, I don't know, let's say you're playing as Venice. Let's say you're playing as Venice. Uh, you got 10,000 people in your city and it's currently growing at plus 2%. It's got some nice farms in there, it's growing okay. You've got your faction leader, He's, he starts off with a bit of chivalry, so that's good. Um, you go and conquer some settlements, you occupy them, you don't capture prisoners, and when you do, you just release them. You know, a very chivalrous guy. You go on a crusade as well, get some chivalry from that, and then he's there with 10 chivalry. If you take him home, put him in the settlement of Venice, then he's got 10 chivalry, so always divide it by 2, and that's how much population he'll add to the settlement. So that's plus 5% population, on top of whatever Venice is producing from all the farms and stuff. So all of a sudden, Venice is going to explode with its population and grow very quickly. You're going to get those upgraded walls much sooner, or upgrading castles as well. You get upgraded units much earlier on in the campaign. So chivalry, it does have quite a lot of values, but generally speaking, 90% of your generals should be going for dread to help with those battles and mass routes. Number five, regicide. If you kill all the generals in a faction uh, from the family tree, the faction enters regicide where it just dies. All its armies, all its settlements just become rebel. I figured this out very early on, but in my time lapses, I get a lot of questions, people, when a faction just disappears and becomes rebel, like people often uh, question it and see what's going on. A lot of people used to think I deleted the faction, um, but no, it's just it's just regicide. It's what happens when the generals die. Uh, it happens. It doesn't really happen in single player campaigns. But once you do the uh, the time lapse stuff and you start going 300, 400, 500 turns in, you get to see a lot of regicides happen because families just eventually die out when led by the AI. So yeah, in some cases you can use it to your advantage. Uh, just to wipe out a faction that you might find annoying term than rebel, and then the rebels are easy to deal with. But it's very rare you'll find yourself in a position where you know you can regicide a faction here. It's actually kind of more useful in barbarian invasion. If there's a massive horde, just go in there, kill like the fellow generals, and you wipe out the entire armies. It's that's the main use, right? But it's, I discovered it in Medieval 2, so I put it in the Medieval 2 video. And number seven, I wish I knew this much, much earlier. My campaigns would have been just far smoother and my mentality would have been better towards Total War and just everything would have been so much better. You, you don't know how much this changed my life. Now, it's not an actual cheat code, although it does, you know, it is a cheat code. Go into the console command section and type in puppify underscore my underscore love and wham you get all these dogs here and i just wish i knew this earlier like <laughs> so many of my campaigns would have been fast mover 
and would have been so much more enjoyable if I just knew about this card. Like, it is necessary for the gameplay. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed. <laughs> uh, it's a funny little code that very few people actually know about, so I thought I'd throw it in here. Um, yeah, I just I just found it funny, so I threw it in as the seventh. I didn't know what else to add. Like, there's a lot of stuff I could have added in here, but I, I always want the last one uh, to be a little bit of a laugh, so I thought I'd throw that one in. Hope you've enjoyed. I've been Melkor. If you have enjoyed, please do like or subscribe or share it with someone you think may be interested. And for now, goodbye.